Hi, I'm Michael Quinn. I'm the U.S. lead for The Stable. The questions facing CEOs today can't always be answered internally. In fact, the most innovative solutions are likely happening outside your walls. Now, that's no slight on any one organization because the best leaders know they have to lean on learning from every organization in every industry. The Stable by Elevation Barn is a consultancy that brings diverse, seasoned, executive level knowledge to solve specific challenges. The ambiguous, the urgent, the grand challenges facing business and philanthropic leaders today. By engaging cross sector, industry wide experts from the Elevation Barn community, we're harnessing the communal wisdom and agility of decades of high powered, high pressure experience. You won't find these leaders together anywhere else. For peers like you with existential business challenges, we curate a team of these experts, all with different but relevant experience coming together in a culture of collaboration and support, solving together with a single goal in mind, yours. This video is a rare window into our process in the caliber of talent we bring to bear on critical challenges. Thank you. All right, well, thank you everyone for joining us on our roundtable call on branding. The topic today is specifically your advice about branding, your number one tip for the CEO running an organization today. Let me first introduce everyone from the Elevation Barn community. Errol Flanagan, brand strategist, in his international marketing career, Errol has worked with some of the world's most innovative and culturally iconic brands and destination experiences. A former teacher and management consultant, his focus is on strategy and creativity for positive impact. Ibrahim Alcalza is the founder of Alchemy Brand Lab, a consultancy that helps founders scale their brand by selling their soul. Ian Bell is a founder, chief innovation officer, changemaker, and tree hugger. Ian has 25 years of challenger brand marketing at Samsung, Red Bull, Nestle, Unilever, and now works with disruptive scale-ups and advises established brands on creativity and innovation. Gerilyn Green is a C-suite advisor at Weber Shandwick, former Yum Brands chief communications officer and public affairs officer, and now CEO of New Capacity Partners for leadership strategy and communications firm. For the, for the executive team, we need to ask ourselves and continually ask ourselves, what market are we in? What market are we actually in? We, and then we need to define and redefine that market or that category. And I'm always surprised how little and how um, scarce that questioning is because it unlocks so much wonderful opportunity and the businesses that win tend to have a very, very good handle on what category they're in and what market they're in. As an example, Red Bull isn't in the energy drinks business. Um, Red Bull is in energy and it's on energy and on, on their terms. The second one is around respecting and understanding your rivals. So let, let's ignore um, fighting to the death and this 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 win-win um, sort of mentality plays out really well if you if even if you look at big brands. So Samsung, when Samsung stopped just trying to beat Apple, obsessively trying to beat Apple as a business, and they actually respected, uh, started to love the strengths of Apple, their acceleration in market share to then be the uh, number two player and take out the rest by respectfully looking at Apple um, completely changed uh, the way that they behaved and it changed the market and it left Google, Nokia, Motorola and others in their way. And then the third one, I would say, focus on reach and penetration. And, and that doesn't mean focus on quantity over quality. It means focus on quality at quantity. That's quality at quantity quantity because all of these different touch points that you're able to uh, to be in the different micro markets that you can operate in the re-articulation of how you are of a, 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 as a brand enables you to live in this ever fragmenting world you know just for context i wanted to start off with a statistic you know in in the s p 500 90 percent of the value now comes from intangible assets so while a lot of this is technology, brand value is a big part of it. So next to your talent and the knowledge that your people are building, 
your brand is one of your most precious assets. And so my number one tip for CEOs and brand leaders today is twofold. One is invest in brand discipline. And the other is an invest in stakeholder intelligence. And I'll start with the first one on brand discipline. In, in 2016, when I was at Yum Brands, we, we made this decision to refocus our business on pure play franchising and sharpening our brand in the 120 plus markets where we operated at the time. And we created a strategy that had brand and people at the center, but also turned this into a mindset, a series of values, a market by market playbook, a discipline for not only marketers, but also leaders, operators, and restaurant developers. And this is an approach that remains at the heart of the company's continuous generation of shareholder returns. And this discipline that we created affects everything from strategic planning to unit development to talent selection. So by focusing on a discipline that helped us stay focused on delivering a great customer experience, but also returns in what was a changing landscape. And this leads me to my second point, which is more current to what's going on right now. As we move into this era of stakeholder capitalism, and I realize there's a whole debate about if we're actually moving in that direction, but either way, there's a wider group of audiences that are making demands on your brands. And so it's both an opportunity and a challenge, but every day there are news reports that highlight the risks. As a CEO, you're tasked with leading your brand and building trust across investors, employees, customers, policy leaders, suppliers, even detractors. Um, and so um, what I help companies do is help think about their business from a multi-stakeholder standpoint. And in this complex environment, my advice is to really develop a true fluency, deep and intimate understanding of your most critical internal and external stakeholders. Work with your teams to get this intelligence. The tools are available. Incorporate those insights into your decisions systematically, not just when an event happens, and it'll help you see ahead and navigate your brand through the turbulent waters we all find ourselves in. So when it comes to squishy things, um, like branding, like marketing, things that can feel squishy, we wanna make sure that we can feel like we're getting what we pay for. So we like when little numbers are attached to it. Um, and so there's an entire industry that I was a part of that's been built around measuring these things and selling you the illusion of the certainty you crave. And so this cocoon, I think, really keeps us detached from the outside world and attached from what makes our brand special, which is the soul that typically founders, but also their leaders, end up putting into uh, the brand. And brands that are more themselves than other brands are themselves typically do better. So my advice to CEOs would be, with Nike in mind, watch the air film with your senior leadership team and watch it from two points of view. First, as a consumer, popcorn in hand or whatever it might be. And secondly, as a, a study on popular culture. And I would go start to finish, you know, opening credits to end credits and dissect with your leadership team, spend a moment together which I don't think CEOs do, delving into a moment of popular culture and exploring what it might mean for your brand and uh, and others around you. How, how does a CEO begin the process of of, uh, of moving in the direction that you, you've all touched on? Well, it's a big question, right? So what, how, how do you, what are you supposed to be chasing then if certainty is an illusion? And so the best way to achieve some sort of focus is to have we have a situation where we're all singing from the same song sheet. We're all chasing the same thing. We all know how to prioritize what it is that we're doing. And then the big numbers will move. So what are the indicators of success? I think if you understand those and you understand what creates those, importantly, then you're going to get there. And I think that applies definitely to popular culture. A big part of ideas is imagination and creativity and the ability to think beyond the the certain the, the facts that are in front of us to try to think about the bigger picture. And I think it's important for leaders of organizations that are operationally focused to understand that certainty is a creativity condom. And so by putting those shackles on too early, 
you actually lose the ability to go perhaps down the even the most rational path in the sense that it's the one that's most likely to lead you to success. The tendency is to um, actually assume all of these um, feelings-based, in, in, intangible, forward-thinking, creative solutions are the ones that don't drive the value because they have less of a measure. No, they cause the measure to be created in the future. That's actually what happens. Coming up with the goal at the beginning then needs to have a um, sensible framework around it to make sure that you're on track, but it needs to be in, in, in that order. And the what I've seen work well is, you know, taking a step back and actually signaling to your leadership team, we're going to have a different kind of conversation and we're going to bring in quantitative insights and qualitative insights, but I want to step back and have us come to a collective understanding, realizing that people are at different places on the continuum as to what are we facing or what is our market to Ian's point, you know, and continually asking. And so by taking a step back, bringing in the insights, framing the questions and the conversations that need to be continually taking place over time, you build a new dialogue among your leadership team to lead the organization to whatever the solution should be. If you have a pressing need or know of a leader or organization who does, The Stable is ready to be challenged. To learn more or to contact us, visit thestablebyeb.com. Thank you.